Did your breastfeeding class get canceled due to the COVID pandemic? Are you afraid that you missed out on some of the key information that you need to start breastfeeding? By the end of this video, you're gonna have all the information you need to get your breastfeeding journey off on the right start. Whether you're still expecting your little one or well into your breastfeeding journey, make sure you subscribe so that you can get the most up-to-date information about lactation and make sure to hit the bell so you're notified every week when I post a new video each Tuesday. My name is Cassie Reyes. I'm a registered nurse and an international board certified lactation consultant. And I've helped thousands of families in the hospital and in the home to get their breastfeeding journey off to a good start and help them reach their breastfeeding goals. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is skin to skin. The importance of skin to skin is huge, both for baby and for the lactating parent. When baby is born, there's a period of time known as the golden hour, which is the first hour after baby is born. Baby will be placed skin to skin, and this skin to skin contact is gonna help baby transition from life in the womb to life in the outside world. It's gonna help baby regulate body temperature and blood sugar. And for the parent, skin to skin is going to help get oxytocin flowing. Oxytocin is bonding hormone and it's also a very important hormone in milk production. Skin to skin is great during the first hour but can also be done anytime during breastfeeding. It's a great way to start out a feed whenever baby is really sleepy, but it's time for a feeding. You can always get baby undressed down to the diaper and do some skin to skin so that when it's time for a feeding, the baby's already right there and ready to start looking. One of the major questions that I get in the first day or two in the hospital is, all I'm getting is drops of colostrum. I I'm not making enough milk for my baby. How do I know if my baby's getting enough to eat? It's very important to understand that in the early days, right after birth, you're gonna see drops of colostrum. Colostrum is thick, sticky, very important substance that's very, very concentrated in nutrients and protective factors for your baby. When your baby's born, their stomach capacity is about the size of a marble. So if you can see this little tiny circle here, this is the size of baby's stomach when they're born. So those drops that you're seeing on day one are more than enough for baby to sustain themselves. So as long as you're seeing one pee and one poopy diaper on the first day of life, um, and your nurse will also be weighing the baby usually around the 24 hour mark, you're going to have a good idea of how well that baby's eating. So as long as you're seeing one pee and one poopy diaper and that the weight loss is within normal limits, then we would say that the baby is eating enough for day one. All babies lose a little bit of weight after birth. We expect hopefully more or less in the first 24 hours that babies lose less than 5% and the goal is for them to lose less than 10% of their birth weight before leaving the hospital. It takes about three to five days for mom's mature milk to come in, and it's a slow transition from that thick, sticky colostrum into a transitional milk, which will start to look more liquidy, less thick and sticky, and then turn into a more mature milk. Another problem on the first day that a lot of parents worry about is that babies are very sleepy and they spit up a lot in the first 24 hours. So once they're born, babies have a lot of amniotic fluid in their bellies that they need to clear out. So a lot of times, even if you do bring baby to breast and they do get on, they may start to gag and spit up some clear fluids. It's nothing to worry about. This is very normal. It usually takes about 24 hours for them to clear that amniotic fluid out of their system. They will also be very sleepy this first day of life. You may find that they feed great on the first feeding in that golden hour that we talked about and then may take a very long nap for maybe most of that first day of life. 
Um, you still want to try to wake up the baby every two to three hours to offer the breast, but you may find that for some feeds, baby is just too sleepy and will not wake up to get on. And that's a perfect opportunity to just do some skin to skin, um, a little bit of hand expression. We will be doing a video on hand expression um, and we'll teach you how a good technique for doing hand expression to be able to express drops of colostrum, which you can then collect on your finger and finger feed to baby. Finger feeding drops is more than enough usually for babies on the first day of life. So we started to touch upon this a little bit already, but the next question that I frequently get asked is how often should I breastfeed and how long should the baby be on the breast? So in the first day, as I mentioned, babies are very sleepy. You still want to offer every two to three hours. However, the feedings might be really short on the first day. Baby's still learning. You're still learning. You guys are learning together how to achieve that latch. And because of that sleepiness, a little bit of uncoordinated suck that baby may have on the first day, latching may last for five to 10 minutes per feeding, and that's fine. That's more than enough for the first day. By the second day, we would hope that baby would start being a little bit more alert and active for feeds and be latching for approximately 15 to 20 minutes per side. And when I say per side, that doesn't mean that baby needs to latch on both breasts at each feeding. So really what you wanna do is let baby completely finish on one breast. You want to make sure you have a good latch, make sure that baby seems comfortable and that you're feeling a strong pull. We're gonna talk in a minute about um, what a comfortable good latch should feel like, but you wanna let baby completely finish on one side. So once baby finishes on the first side, may fall asleep, you may see that he or she is done at that point. You may also bring the baby to your chest, do some burping, and realize that the baby starts rooting again and showing more hunger cues, in which case you would want to switch over to the second breast and offer the second breast. Keep in mind that you may not get a full 15 to 20 minutes on the second side, and that's fine. You just wanna start on that side at the next feeding. A lot of times people have heard that breastfeeding hurts, or breastfeeding should hurt, or you should expect it to hurt in the beginning until you get used to it. In reality, breastfeeding shouldn't hurt. It's normal to have a little bit of discomfort in maybe the first week or so. What we're aiming for is a two to three out of 10 or less pain. What worries me is usually by the time I get to work with a family, we already have very, very painful, bruised, cracked, bleeding nipples because of this misperception that breastfeeding should hurt. So here's where we're gonna talk about the importance of latching. Deep latching, is the key to comfortable breastfeeding and also the key to good milk transfer. So if baby just gets on and grabs the nipple, this is gonna be very, very uncomfortable for the parent and it's also as if baby is sucking through the end of a pinched off straw. Babies need to get on the breast deep and over most of the areola in order to use their jaws to massage the breast and get the milk, draw the milk out of the breast. We will be posting a video about different breastfeeding positions and techniques for achieving a deep latch, but be sure that you work closely with your nurse and your lactation consultants when your baby's born to learn the proper technique for deep latching before allowing any damage to be done to the nipples. Keep in mind that breastfeeding should not hurt. So I wanna hear from you. What are some of the myths that you've heard about breastfeeding? Maybe we can address some of those myths, such as breastfeeding should hurt, you need to drink milk to make milk. What are some of the other myths that you've heard about breastfeeding that maybe we can expel in another video? Comment down below. So the fifth thing we're gonna talk about is waking a sleepy baby. 
we talked about how it's a normal expectation for babies to be really sleepy on the first day of life. So what are some of the tips and tricks for awaking a sleepy baby when you're trying to work on breastfeeding? One of the most important things is to unwrap the baby. The nurses are gonna help you learn to do these beautiful swaddles. However, when it's time for a feed, you wanna unwrap them from that nice swaddle Get them down to the diaper. If you need to change a diaper to wake the baby up, that's another good technique for the first day. Grab a cold wet wipe, change their diaper. You can tickle their feet a little bit if you need to. Bring baby to do some skin to skin. If you find that baby is really, really sleepy still, despite offering at the two to three hour mark, you can always continue doing skin to skin for another 20 to 30 minutes and try again. Some techniques while baby's on the breast, if they get on and they just tend to fall asleep after latching, you can massage the palms of their hands, kind of tickle under their chin. A support person can help tickle baby's feet. Sometimes a little tickling under the armpits is a great way to get baby a little bit more engaged during latching. If you've tried all those previous tricks we talked about and Latching is just not happening on that first day. Don't worry about it. Hand expression is a great technique to give you a little bit of extra stimulation to express those drops and get the drops out and finger feed them to your baby. In the early days, you want to do regular stimulation about every three hours. So the goal is to have either the baby or in the case that baby is not latching beyond the first 24 hours, a breast pump stimulating the breast every three hours for about 15 to 20 minutes to really kick into gear that milk making process. So that's a basic summary. Now you have the basic information of what you need to get through at least the first day or two of your breastfeeding and lactation journey. We'll continue to post more videos about other topics in breastfeeding and lactation. If you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe to our channel down below and be sure to share it with your friends or anyone else that you think would find the information on this channel helpful.